Okay. I totally forgot to move my mic into uh, the recording area, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so I have a couple scenes that I built uh, showcasing a few different ways of uh, using rocks for a multitude of different things. Give me just a second. I'm going to turn this robot off. Uh, he started turning off, and then he turned on again. Weird. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, I have one open already. So here's this scene. Um, and each scene kind of progressively gets a little bit different and intricate, but I'm going to show you this one first because it's one of my favorites. But as you can see here, I just have kind of rocks everywhere. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason into how they're being spread, but it, uh, what I wanted to show was the cliff faces that you can make with these, uh, with this specific process. So um, it makes uh, it makes these really rocky cliff faces a lot easier to make. Uh, so I'm going to break this down for you. I'm going to break down all of them for you, but uh, we're, we're going to start with this one. So originally. I was looking over on this side for these rocks right here, which these look really good too. We got big slabs, we got like crevices in between some of them. Um, and then I started looking around a bit more. Uh, I was actually focusing on this rock right here, as you can see here. This is all made with uh, procedurals inside of Guy. I'm not using any texture maps or anything, so this turned out really well. Uh, and I was focusing on this one, and then I was like, okay, well, let's. I like the way this looks, and there's too much rock everywhere, but I didn't really care. And I turned over to the side, and I was like, oh, okay. So we still have the really good looking rocks that uh, that we were creating with the, the nice coloration and texture. But the cliffs themselves, since this structure right here um, had a slope to it, it embedded into the slopes extremely well. Uh, and create a nice, really good-looking rock cliff face uh, that isn't just totally stretched up and down. Like it's, uh, it has decent texture in between too. So let's look at that real quick. So we have a multifractal here. A lot of them start with multifractal, um, or a couple of them do, I suppose. But you can see what I used here. I used this one uh, because it was a very nice, uh, nice little hill here but I had this nice slope to it, and I was like, okay, I want some rocks maybe being implemented on the uh, on the slope here. I then made a rocky node, and that's what this these builds kind of surround on is the rocky node. And you can see the settings that I chose here. I chose very small size, and then everything else is just 100%. It's like maxed out, except for the jitter. The jitter didn't really make much of a difference, though you could increase it if you wanted. Um, I didn't because it... Honestly, it, it didn't make so much of a difference that I needed to keep it. Um, but what I did after that is I, did, I displaced it. Um, and the reason why is because these are just extremely uniformed rocks. And then when you displace them, you start getting big slabs like this. And it also starts creating these crevices, like right here and right here. And those crevices are nice for uh, creating additional rock features, and like these three right here. The rotation is set to zero degrees, but you can actually rotate this to be in any specific direction you want. Um, I'm going to get into another build after this one where I will show you that. Additionally, the rocky node is actually equalized and uh, the influence is toned way down uh, or, or turned way down, I suppose, not toned, um, down to 3%. So what I did is I just pinned this one uh, I just pin the node, not for underlay, but just pin right here, F, press F on the keyboard. And then I decreased the influence until I found the amount that I needed. And then we were left with something like this. You can see how it's working on the, uh, the sides here. I'm using the embed option with the ratio set to 100 and nothing on the extend. Um, and then we're left with this really rocky kind of set up here and if you look at the original multifractal it's a very featureless multifractal there's some little features here and there but it's for the most part it's just mostly featureless 
but the the magic comes from the embed option um, and then when you do that the rocks will actually take on the slope of whatever they're being embedded in so instead of this being flat they're now going up on the edges and on the slope and that's how we're left with these really cool rock features on the sides so anyways, uh, that's what we're left with, is these cool like slope features here. So let's move forward. Um, the last height node here is a snowfall. And there are a couple ways I like to use snowfall, and it's not just for snow. I like using it for, um, excuse me, I'm yawning for some reason. I like using it for embedded landscape features in the underlying landscape. So in this case, it's a multifractal, but the snowfall actually helps blend everything together, as you can see here. That's why in the uh, last combined node there for the coloring parts, um, it's green rather than white, because I like using it for like widespread landscape coverage uh, for uh, like features jutting out of the landscape. So in this case, big rocky features like this. The texturing, um, I have gone through how I texture numerous times in other videos. So if you haven't watched any of the coloring techniques that I normally go through, um, you can go back and watch those. And you, like even in the last video I went through, it's essentially the same thing. But in this case, there's a slight difference, and that is these rock maps. Um, and I kind of hinted this in the last video too, but I have a slope here. And the slope connects to the snowfall, and um, I use it as, hold on a second, make sure I got this right. Yeah, okay. So I'm not going to worry about this one right here. Okay. So this slope selects everything uh, that is 90 degrees, or from 76 degrees to 90 degrees in slope. If you wanted a better selection, you can take your snow here, if you're following this exact same process, and invert it and that will give you what you need so you just take out the slope mask and invert that and you're left with um, a more precise map like this rather than a slope because a slope you'll get these things right here which uh, create uh, really weird artifacts and the I'll show you you probably saw them before right here right there um, but I find that these are really nice when you're wanting to make something like Scree um, and uh, you can implement it that way. But if you wanted a more precise mask, you can use this invert and I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I do, in many cases, prefer the invert. Uh, oh, sorry, you don't want to put that on the rock map. The rock map is always going to be connected to the final landscape node or height node and then you want to put the invert into the mask section and we'll do that for both of these both of these rock maps and uh, that'll that'll be good so the slope is a good way to do it um, but if you're using the snowfall just invert the snow mask you can use the snow or the snow hard doesn't really matter um, and then you'll be left with these what else are we using here? Uh, we also want to take these and attach that to the invert. And this displace, we want to attach that to the invert as well, like that. And that'll clean up the coloring quite a bit. Sorry, I'm fixing this as I go. I didn't want to, but I'm going to anyways, because I want to show you guys this process. Because I like the way it, it turns out. So we have these two rock maps now connected to the invert snow mask. So now we're getting just the rocks uh, the way we need them. And uh, they're using two sat maps that kind of benefit each other. So this one's using 420 and this one is using 234. And the rock maps that I'm using are just a basic uh, default. And then the second one, I uh, use the same default map. Uh, but I added a displace node and as you can see here this displace node Just totally adds these striations in the selection, but breaks it up a bit more and um, you uh, You displace that based on your selection for your mask So whether that be the slope or the invert 
That way it, it's only being applied to those rocks. And then you apply your rock map to it. And then when you combine them together, you can use 100% blend, which is what I did. Um, but you don't have to. You can use something like multiply and you can have darker patches of rock. Or you can have something like subtract or you know whatever works best for you uh, and your looks. But I like the way this one looked because it gave us these uh, long rock striations. Kind of like there's little crystalline salt crystals or granite crystals or something inside the rock. So they're just not this flat gray. Um, and that's being applied to all of them, so even over here. It's not perfect. You can definitely be more selective with how it's being applied, but um, for these big rock slabs, I think it turns out really well. Um, if you look back over on this one, you can see it looking really good there. So uh, I like the way that looks. So that's uh, the first one. This one will break down kind of like the large rocky uh, rock clusters on the slopes. Um, I'm going to show you another one, so I'm going to go ahead and save this, and let's open, yes. And I do like the way that that looks quite a bit. So the other one is uh, this one, you have Pocked Lava Rock and the Lake. The lake isn't super important here, but I do want to show you the, the rocks the pocked rocks. There's, it's not really pocked marked. It's there's just a lot of little rocks everywhere, um, and you have to kind of finagle the rocky node for it to work. Because if you don't, this one's the grid on this one's also a mess because this my my grids often look really messy when I'm just tampering around inside of Gaia before I clean it all up. Um, and when I do videos, uh, live video, when, when I'm doing the breakdown with you as I'm going along and building it. I try to keep it really clean so it's easy to follow follow along. But this one is not. This is how they typically look when like when I'm thinking of ways to do things. I don't think about cleaning it all up. So uh, excuse the mess in the graph. That's not typical of me. Um, but in any case, uh, we'll we'll break it down when it's done building. It should have saved out the uh, the cache for it, but I guess it didn't. So I'm going to pause the video, let it build, and then I'll I'll come back to you. Okay, so this is the pocked, like, lava rock and lake. Uh, so it's just a lake and then uh, these really dry hills. It's kind, of, it's kind of simulating something that we have here in Utah. Like I do a lot of my stuff on, I, I kind of base it around what I see in Utah. Um, and we have these, like, really harsh ridge lines in some areas where there's just a lot of dry grass, which is what I'm trying to get with the color. And then just a bunch of lava rock like this, just dark black rock just kind of pocked everywhere over the surface but as you can see here the the rocks are a lot smaller and larger than what you would get if you were to normally use um your just a regular rock rocky node and i'll show you what i did to uh to do that so um we'll start with the ridge first and Again, the ridge here isn't super important. I didn't even really do a whole lot with it. I just changed around the scale height and definition a bit. I think I just changed the seat around until I found something with good slopes like this and this. And then eroded it. Um, but the rocky here is, uh, this is important, because the rocks are really big. Uh, these are like giant boulders that would encompass the landscape completely if I didn't transform them. So I put in a transform node and I reduced the scale to 50% and then changed the angle to 226. And that's because, um, sorry, I'm yawning again. I don't know why I'm yawning. So the reason why I changed the angle is because I was displacing these rocks at first. I was trying to play around with like different warps and things like that to make them look cool. I think I was playing with the whorl node a little bit. Um, but I didn't like the way they looked, so I just, uh, the angle here doesn't matter as long as it's just square. If it's square like this, mostly, then this will work. So we essentially took this whole thing right here, reduced it by 50%, and now we're taking the bomber node and we're just splatting it all over the place like this. And you can see here we even have an issue where we have these harsh cutoffs, like right here. Oops. Uh, right there um, and up here 
and those are from the corners of the square. But that's okay because we are covering the majority of our landscape still. But as you can see here, the rocks are much smaller now and uh, they're more controllable when you uh, do this. And these are the settings I'm using. Um, you can bomb it a few times, but then you end up getting like weird distortions. Um, I don't recommend that. But if you needed to, you can definitely give that a try. You can even change the rocky size in the transform down to maybe 25% and uh, get even smaller rocks but this was rather important because if you didn't do this the rocks would just be everywhere and it wouldn't look good after that we just do the same thing we do a combine set to embed and the ratio set to 100 percent and then we're left with just a bunch of rocks being scattered uh, all over the the landscape here and it looks good without a lake uh, we definitely do have a lot of rocky fields like this where you can walk through old volcanic areas here in utah where you can literally just walk on top and over and in between big lava rocks and it's pretty cool. If I ever get around to maybe getting out into the field a bit more and taking some shots for you guys, um, some photo some photographs of all these things I'm talking about, uh, Utah truly is an amazing state. Like we have everything here. We have forests, we have deserts, we have mountainous regions, we have dunes, we have hills. Um, at, at, like you can start out in northern Utah, it's really green and lush and mountainous and as you make your way down towards southern Utah It gets really orange and red and deserty and it's it's just really crazy It's it's a it's a freaking ride living in Utah because if you want to go to the dunes and go dune bugging or uh, or like uh, I don't know like four-wheeling out in the dunes you can do that or if you want to go up north and go skiing all in the same month you can do that like it's skiing or snowboarding it's it's freaking crazy uh in any case uh, i introduced a c node into this because I, I didn't want the rocks down here though that could work i just didn't want them down there as much so i just kind of played around with the c node until i found the results i liked played with the beach size it, it was very arbitrary it didn't really matter um and then there's no there, there's nothing particularly special about the texturing here which is why it's one of the worst designed uh aspects of this graph i'll just show you the end result for the coloring because by this time the coloring uh if you've watched any of my videos again if you watched any of them the coloring is it's my favorite thing to do in gaia but this one just wasn't all that special it was just this dark rock and this flat grayish green color and and the water and that was it um nothing too special there and i also have a breakdown in another video on how to properly uh tune fine tune the water parameters so you can get some really good looking water i did not do that in this case i just hastily did it but i did like the way this landscape looked and i would definitely pull this into something like cinema 4d or vu and render this out with a nice water plane layer and, and stuff like that very cool looking landscape in my opinion uh very understated as well all right let's go to the next one uh we'll open up i'm not going to save any of that um this one's the old version of rocky peaks and faces i believe so the next one will be Long Sharp Rocks, I believe. I can't remember. I should have named them, like gave them names, like number one, number two, number three, but I didn't. Um, and some of those tour files are videos that I had, rec uh, or graphs that I've made for videos that I was going to record. Uh, never did record it, but then I ended up making a, a tutorial that had better results anyways, and that was my last video. Um, regarding the the mountain peaks and whatnot so that one lo looked better than the one that i had recorded before it anyways so you all won on that one including me all right i'm gonna pause this um let it build out maybe if my mouse will function there we go okay so now that it's done loading let's go ahead and break this down um this one's very similar to the first one that we went over. We just have this hill. We're using a multifractal, a very uh, kind of featureless multifractal. Matter of fact, I think I copied to some degree. No, this this fractal is slightly different. Um, I thought I had copied 
the other one, but I didn't. So uh, this one's slightly different. Um, but we, uh, what I was going for here is more of this edge kind of cliff face thing, but I wanted sharper rocks, uh, like more, uh, less blocky and just more line and, uh, di or vertical, I guess, going in a direction, kind of like they're outcropping in a certain direction. And I think I got it here to some degree. It might not be perfect. Uh, you can probably finesse it a bit more, but as you can see here, we have like these rocks kind of growing upwards uh, and over, and they're kind of like sharper rocks. Some of them are even growing diagonally like this, uh, where they're like, these are going up, these are growing out that way. So let's break this down. Again, we start with the rocky node. And you can see the settings I had here. I just have very small size and hardly any small rocks. I wanted bigger rocks for this because we're actually going to be reducing them quite a bit in size. Um, but the breakage and the roughness and the jitter, I all increased really high. So we have these big slabs. This goes to a displace. And I like to displace these rocks because it, it makes them less uniform. Um, but this time I am using a... Uh, a rather crazy kind of scale and strength uh, for these. And you can see how they kind of get pushed in uh, any certain direction that you, they're displacing. And it'll be different for you guys. Uh, but they're kind of creating these crazy looks. This is where it gets interesting. I'm using a line noise. And I'm attaching these displaced rocks to the line noise. And you can see how that breaks them up like this. It doesn't look all that great when they're like this. Uh, but I do it twice. I do one at, uh, what was it, 90 degrees, and then one at 80 degrees. Uh, no, this one's set to Gaussian. That's right. Uh, they're both set to Gaussian, and then um, the transform nodes here is what uh, creates their angle. So this one's 180, um, and it's essentially just going straight north. And this one is set to 90, and that makes them go left and right, or east and west, I suppose. So they just kind of break up each other in different ways. When I combine them together, I'm using a difference set to 50%, um, and then you can see how that breaks up these rocks uh, going north and south and east and west. Very, And it gives you this crazy look. It's not like anything that you would normally want to use just as is. So what I did is I attached an aperture, and I'm using the spread option, and that creates these kind of broken up rock pillars uh, to some degree. It might not be a perfect visual look for it, but when you add another displace or a warp even, you are left with these kind of craggy, broken up rock uh, patterns. And this is actually a good method to create lava rock. So go on to like uh, Megascan's website or the bridge and look up their lava rock material, you'll see that it has like this kind of craggy look to it uh, that kind of flows in really weird directions. I, I have it downloaded. Uh, I just don't know if I want to go pull it up because I have to go search through a bunch of crap. Um, but this is a good way to make some craggy looking like Hawaiian lava rock um, is that method. Just use some line noise and then ap apply a aperture and displace it a bit. Um, or warp it. It might be better if you have like a directional warp rather than a displace. Um, and then in this one, I have a mask. And this mask is selecting um, this part of that hill. I just have it colored in around the edges and left the top alone. That way it's being applied to uh, this rocky uh, noise is being applied only to this edge. And then when you combine them, again, we're using embed with a ratio set to 100. And then the extend. The extend here is really important because we're going to fill this in with a snowfall. And the more you increase the extend, the more these rocks get pushed down into the ground. They become really sharp and jagged. Um, you can probably go higher than 65%, but I didn't. Um, but you do want to have them pushed really far down into the ground, especially if you're going to be using a snowfall to kind of cover them up like that because then uh, you'll you'll end up with a lot more detail. And as you can see here, we have these really rocky, craggy surfaces. And even the, the very steep areas, normally in most height applications, they'll have uh, very few details. They'll just be straight and 
uh, the texture will be kind of uh, stretched. But now we have these really nice details along the edges and the rock kind of making its way up through the top of the, the landscape. We deal, we still have like these weird outliers right here. Um, it's not a very perfect process uh, still. I mean, it's this is something that I've been working on for a couple weeks now, not this specific, not these specific builds, just these, the concepts, like looking at references, going outside, going up into the mountains, uh, doing whatever it is I need to do to kind of learn the structures. It's been going on for well over a couple years, but more recently for these rocky structures, specifically the last couple weeks. Um, and I think I was able to develop them really well. I think uh, uh, what makes it really easy for me to do that, and it might work for you guys too, is anytime I go out into nature, like whether it's a hike or just a walk or whatever, if I'm driving and I'm looking at the mountains, I pull over and take a few minutes to kind of just look at the mountains. Um, you'll... Uh, start to think how you can create those different shapes in Gaia or World Creator or whatever application you're using. And that helps that helps kind of form the, the pathway you need to take to create these certain structures. And I actually have a little journal or a little notebook and a pen that I carry with me. And I'll take a picture and I'll put the date in the notebook, and I'll say I took a picture on this day of this mountain range at this time of day, and these are the nodes that I think will create that same mountain structure if I wanted to recreate it, or at least the features that it has. And I'll write that down into a little book, and I'll go back and I'll look at it when I'm at night, when my family's in bed and I'm trying to do more Gaia stuff or more 3D stuff in general. I'll go through those notes, and I'll read exactly what it is I wrote, and I'll try to recreate it. I'll just focus on one thing at a time that way. And then as, as soon as I get a process down, um, then I just uh, check mark it in the notebook saying I got the process down. I don't scribble over it. I don't cover it up. I don't rip it out. I keep it because even though I got the process down and that sticks with me a little bit better, that's how I learn faster. I might forget certain things and I'll go back to the notebook and look at it. And having a tangible physical object in my hand is easier for me to know things rather than having like a laptop with a bunch of notepads on it because I'll forget that I even made those notepads because I typed them up and called it good. But if I'm writing it, like physically writing it and having the notebook in my hand, it makes it a lot easier. So anyways, that's just my a, opinion on how I go about doing things. Uh, it works for me. It might not work for everybody, but definitely works for me. And as you can see here, uh, we have really good rocky structures across the whole uh, sides of this little hill. And then I didn't do a whole lot of texturing on this one because I didn't care to very much. But again, we're, we're taking the invert of the snow mask here and we're using that to select our rocks. And that way we get the like pixel perfect selection of where our rocks are. And then I just color them how I normally would and then combine it together with this flat green color with a little bit of speckle to it. There's like these little specks to it from a surf, surf text node. Um, not a perfect color job um, but it was mostly just getting these rock structures down is what I cared more about uh, and then coloring them making sure that they have decent color uh, and I think this one worked out pretty well so um, we do have another one so let's go and look at another one so we did that one that one I'm helping uh, a person in the discord with that's his we looked at that one that one I did the tutorial on already. That was the old one, Rocky Slopes and Cliffs. This is the last one. This one's fun because uh, it's super, super rocky. It's not just like kind of rocky textured. It's, it's actually really rocky. Very sharp looking rocks as well. So I'm going to let this build out again, um, and then uh, I'll be right back. All right, and last one, uh, probably uh, no, most definitely not the least, uh, but the last one for this video. This is just a, a rocky slope noise, and we're just enhancing the slope noise with the rocky node. Uh, and I'll show you what I did here. So we just took a slope noise. I wanted there to be a little bit of variation here, so I decreased the scale um, and decreased the displacement. So we're left with this very basic kind of slope. 
noise. I didn't do any anything specific there other than just change the displacement and the scale. Um, and then we added the Rocky node directly to the combine. The combine is using a uh, insert option in this case. You'll see the options here. Uh, I've gone over the insert uh, method back when it was the insert node and it was its own thing. Uh, but nothing's actually really more or less changed with it. So uh, if you wanted to go back and watch uh, the video that I explained that in, you definitely can do that. Um, but other than that, everything's about the same. The only difference between, uh, or I, there's a lot of differences between embed and insert, but the insert node actually allows you to flatten certain areas um, and extend areas as well, whereas embed is just more like you're taking your your feature and putting it in another one and squishing it up against it, kind of like we did with those slopes and those rocks, where insert just takes one thing and puts it on top of another, uh, more or less. Uh, there's uh, there's a lot more to it than that. That's just the simplest way I can explain it. But uh, obviously, it gets a little bit more chaotic than that. Um, but those are the best ways I can explain it and keep it simple. Uh, but I changed the Rocky node here to be really small again. I'm using about the same thing that I used in the other ones. Uh, nothing really changed there. But the mask here is important. So the mask, I'm selecting specifically the steep areas. Uh, as best I can. Uh, I wasn't perfect, uh, but I wanted to get these steep areas like this selected, more or less, with a few in between, just to cut off specific areas a little bit. I mean, I don't do it a lot. I mostly just do it right here and right here, but I do it a little bit like right there and here. Um, but I just wanted those very steep areas first. Uh, so if we use the insert node here, we can actually get these really cool rocks that kind of jut up out of the this area right here and create this rocky cliff face, which I thought was a really cool feature um, in this specific build. And we have that a few times. We have one there, which that's the prominent one, just because it's there in the middle. But we we have one here, uh, and then we have some down here. So there's a whole lot of cool places where we now have rock and these like cliff faces. Um, and I just this is the the where I where it's red is where I drew so uh, that's the mask selection and I did that on the slope noise so I was just selecting uh, these areas like these very steep areas so I wanted a lot of steep areas in this one I then eroded it because uh, it didn't look right if there wasn't at least a little bit of erosion and it still doesn't really look all that correct because I didn't finagle the slope noise. I mostly just wanted to get the rocks in there and do what I needed to do with the rocks. But I eroded it after applying the rocks and that gave the rocks a little bit of erosion. Cut them down a little bit in size and um, uh, created these really cool like uh, lines and uh, what are they called? Uh, crevices? Channels? Sorry. Channels. Uh, my kid and my wife have the flu by the way and I've been awake forever. I should have went to bed a long time ago, um, but I didn't sleep all that well, so uh, I've been awake taking care of really sick people, so I, I can't think properly right now. I'm really tired. Um, but in any case, we take that and we uh, combine it again with another embed option and more rocky stuff. Um, and what this does is it breaks up. Uh, this is the rocky node that I had here. You can see this one's actually using clusters. Uh, this one... I believe is not using clusters. Yeah, this one's not. But this one is, because I only wanted them to appear in certain areas. I didn't want them to overtake completely this combined node. Uh, but I embedded these rocks, and that breaks up the rocks from the uh, insert just a tad bit, and breaks, breaks it up here and creates things more jagged and cracky. Um, and I like that. You can often combine multiple things that way. Um, you don't have to stick with one combine node. You can co combine all day if you want. Uh, but this is what we had before. And ignore the erosion. Uh, but that's what we had before, uh, where it creates these rocky slopes, which is what I wanted. I wanted these rocky slopes. Um, but n now I need rocks to actually poke up past the rocky slopes. And that's where the embed comes in. And... Uh, now the rocks will poke up past those slopes 
and create really cool overhangs and whatnot with good detail on the edge. Uh, there's technically not overhangs still, but I mean, it's still just a height based uh, image, but at least we have some good detail on the slopes. Um, the rocky nodes, again, I'm using a level in this case, not equalized, but level with really low influence. And I'm doing that on both of them. And just like in the first one, I just pin the node I want to watch, I, I update, and I just reduce the influence until I find what I like. And then again, we're using the snowfall here. And uh, the snowfall will just fill in the rocks everywhere with this snow, but I'm using it just for grass this time around. Uh, it creates a really cool filled in look for landscapes, especially with these rocks where they just kind of jut straight out of uh, the, the grass and the dirt and whatnot. And if you want inspiration for where I saw that, you can always look at Utah. We have examples of this stuff everywhere, but Easter Island specifically. If you look up images of Easter Island, if you can sift through the millions of pictures of Easter Island big heads, um, there are really great looking uh, nature photos that people took where you'll see a lot of like rocks just coming straight out of the ground and the grass had grown around it. So it looks like it's just jutting straight out of the ground. There's no dirt around it. There's no residual rocks. It's just these big hunking rocks coming straight out of the rock. And I don't know if it's theorized or if it's already been proven, but in my opinion, I think a lot of those rocks were already there and that's what they carved the Easter Island heads out of were just those big rocks that were already coming out of the ground. But in any case, um, that's what the inspiration for this specific look came from with using snow to cover the landscape and then I just color it uh, to look like grass is all I do. It's really hard to introduce detail into it where you don't get banding um, like right here but uh, you can you can do it with enough finesse. In this case I did like a desert look, a, a desert rock look um, but I colored the rocks the exact same way I did in other ones where I have multiple rock nodes and you can see here we have this kind of grisly looking white rock here, but then we have like this greener rock here. Um, and that's from these two rock maps. I did the exact same thing. I just, two rock maps, displaced the other one, um, combined them together and called it good. So that will conclude the breakdown for these like rocky type faces. I wish I can go through and um, uh, build them all out with you, but that would be a way too long a video. And I had a lot of them I wanted to show you, so I'm hoping that the breakdowns and explanations work for you. You can always come back and reference the videos, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to make more in the future where we actually create something like this or like the last one or the first one or whatever. Um, I will be making a video where we go node by node and build them out. But I wanted to make a video where I explained the, difference, the differences in what you can use the Rocky node as in different uh, uh, different tour files. So if you join the Discord, I will actually have all of these tour files uh, uploaded there in a zip package. Hopefully they'll all fit. I don't know if they will. Uh, but if you join the Discord, you can come in and download these tour files and dissect them and play around with them, change them around, however, whatever you want to do, and uh, have a good time with them. So the link to the Discord will be in the description in the Linktree link. That's where you can find all my links uh, if you want to join the Discord or if you want to donate or whatever. Whatever it is that you want to do, you don't have to do anything. It's up to you, uh, but you can find them there. So I'll see you guys in the next one.